The box says it's mighty. Can you believe the box? We're going to find out. This is the Ace Magic 8009. This is an i9 powered mini PC, but something that's not a gimmick. It's actually a function. See that knob on the front? Well, that's like an old school turbo switch that you used to have on your computers where you threw the turbo switch. It gave it a little more power, a little more frequency. That's what this is doing. Now, these low powered parts like the i9 11 900h that's in this one goes up to 4.9 gigahertz well you can control how much voltage is going through there with this with this knob and that kind of makes this interesting and novel i haven't seen a lot of other pcs doing this a lot of them will just like you know if they want to overvolt it or overclock it they'll just do that and that's what you got but this one gives you the option to turn it up and down depending upon what you're doing and that's really cool in my opinion i'm doing all the, the stuff in the video on performance mode but you also have silent mode and auto mode you know if you're just using it to watch videos or watch movies put it on silent mode you don't need all of the i9's power for watching a movie even if it's 4k the i9 is extremely powerful you don't need to be running it hot and loud Turn it down if you're playing a game and you need all of the juice we'll turn it up to performance the fans are going to ramp up sometimes close to 50 decibels so you can hear them but you're going to get that extra performance with headphones or your speakers it's kind of a very low hum in the background with the fan but it is what you get with smaller units Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not going to be relying on Microsoft and they're generally locked to the hardware. But look at this price, $22.92. No, no, no. We got a coupon code. Click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS25. Hit apply. And that price comes down to $17.19. Now when you compare that to the outrageous prices for Microsoft, you'd have to buy this many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular key from Microsoft. As of right now, this Windows 10 Pro key will unlock Windows 11. We also have Windows 10 Home, Windows 11, you can buy it directly, Windows 11 Home, and we have two flavors of Office. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on My Purchase Orders, just View, Keys and Codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit Start, type Activate, click on Activation Settings, paste it in there, click on Next, and you will be activated. So head on over to hookies.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. First off, the specs. Now this is an i9-11900H, 4.9 gigahertz. The i9 has 24 megabytes cache. We got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and we also have RGB on this. I guess you've already seen that with uh, what's going on. The RGB software that's, uh, that comes with this, it's very bare bones right now. It's just got a couple different options. You can rainbow and fading on and off, but you cannot just set it on a static color. Uh, Ace Magic, please give us the option to just do a static color. That way it's not like constantly changing colors. You can turn it off too if you like. So the i9 is really fast. You've got 16 threads going on right here. So on silent mode, it's gonna be between 20 and 30 watts of power. That's really low and it's gonna be really quiet like in the 30 decibel range, put it on automatic, it can go up to 40. So 30 to 40 is where it's going to usually be on automatic. But then when you go to performance mode, it goes between 40 and 55 watts of power, allowing it to get really nice and fast. So that's what I'm going to be using for all the tests. Yeah, sure. You can put it on the other modes. It'll just run things a little slower. And that's totally fine to do while you're doing just random stuff, productivity, browsing the web, watching videos. But if you're playing a game or editing videos or doing some 3D work, then crank it up. And this can do all of those three things, which you'll see in just a second. Also comes with Windows. 11 pre-installed and we can use three different displays on this unit on the front we've got an audio in right there please put audio ins on the back but please if i want to run regular speakers i have to run the cord to the front and then it looks goofy on my desk even if they're headphones i'll plug it into the back just everyone please put them in the back anyway that's just me if you're okay with it in the front and you want to hook up your headphones perfect go for it you've got usb 3.2 you've got two of those in the front and then we have a type c the type c in the front can do a 4K display at up to 60 hertz. Options there with the USB-C. It's USB 4, by the way, the USB Type-C. In the back, we have two more USB 3.2, two HDMI, and those can both do 4K at 60 hertz. Then we have gigabit ethernet and the power adapter on the bottom. Now check this out. If you wanna look under the hood, you don't need to get out a screwdriver. You don't need to do anything weird. The side panel is magnetic and has a couple of plastic hooks on the bottom. It just pops right off, but it's sturdy. It's weird. It comes off so easily because of the way it hooks on and then it comes right off and then you can look in there and see, oh, there's your M.2. And there, there are your two different DDR4 RAM sticks. So if you want to change those out, it's extremely easy. And also we've got some RGB on these. So if you wanted to just like remove the side panel, maybe print a 3D side panel if you wanted to, you probably could. Now the side with your core components, that is sealed. So you're not just going to be able to open that up. And I would recommend keeping that sealed because they have a couple of fans in there that are pulling in the air. Then we've got some large heat pipes and everything. 
uh, and that's just to make sure everything stays cool. So that side stays closed. Note, on the side that you can open up, you can also put a two and a half inch drive in there. So if you wanted to add some additional storage with a regular SSD or whatever, you can put that in the side. Let's try out Premiere. Now this is 4K uh, footage right here, and I'm running it, as you can see, full. So we're not running it at half resolution, running it at full resolution. Yeah, it's, a, it's running great. So if you need, you know, like an editing PC, this is going to be great for this while it might not play like the latest insane AAA action games. It will play 4K footage. Let's make everything full res. Watch me scrub around here. Yep, there we go. Scrub. You know what? Let's make, uh, let's stack it up. Put this up here. Let's do some transitions. How about a fade? Nice long cross dissolve. Let's see how this works. Two 4K uh, things cross dissolving. Oh, look at that. All right, so a little bit of stuttering while we're doing the live cross dissolve between the two different 4K. So yeah, once you start doing some effects, you do see a couple stutters here and there. Uh, but for scrubbing around and moving around in your timeline, it'll be just fine. That's way too long for an effect, so if you're just going to be reasonable like this, that might be okay. So yeah, it could be a little bit smoother with the transitions, but overall, scrubbing around on your timeline and cutting things together is going to work just fine with that. Uh, and even, like I said, even on my ridiculous rig, it's not always perfect when it comes to the transitions and you're doing all that stuff until you actually render it through. I would say this would work just fine uh, for editing. Let's take a look at some Geekbench results right here. So with the single core, 2225, and the multi-core, 9021, you can compare this with your system at home. I'm going to scroll through this pretty quickly. So just pause the screen if you want to see a certain, uh, you know, a certain test down here. And you can compare it to your own Geekbench 6 test at home. There's that. Here's the OpenCL test 7417. Again, if you want to compare it to your stuff and see how much faster the OpenCL performance would be, you may do so. All right, here's our tests. All right, set it to do superposition with DirectX 10 on the medium setting, 1080p. I didn't expect a lot from this because uh, this is not a super high powered gaming computer, but I wanted to see what it could do anyway. So there is our min max and average 9.4. 11.12 and max of 14.07 on the medium 1080p. Also ran Cinebench and here's the final result with the multi-core score of 94.63. And as expected, it's slightly faster than the previous generation. Pretty good performance. Uh, I think you could do okay using this machine to run handbrake, especially if you have a whole bunch of stuff and just let it go all night. Low power, let it go. I really wanna see if we can get some uh, slightly older, we're talking like from 2020, 3D games. And Far Cry 5 was pretty well optimized, but I don't know if it's going to play or not. So I want to see if I can get this running at low, just to see what the i9 can do. We're playing at 1080p. Yeah, it can it can kind of play a little bit. I mean, you could probably play this on 720p. We'll do another run on 720p and see how that goes, to see if you can actually play it. As you can see there, we do not have enough video <laughs> memory for this. 720p coming right up. So that's not too bad. We're well above 30. Maybe it'll dip down a little bit below. This is what you call a cinematic console experience here. You know, the Zelda games, a lot of the times run at like 20 FPS, especially when you're running around in the woods and there's all that geometry going on and leaves and just fog and everything else. Yeah, it gets down to like 24, 22 FPS. But this, this is better than a cinematic console experience. All right, so this is the 720p result playable, question mark? All right, let's do a little Mario Kart here. So we're playing at 1x, and it's running at the solid 60 FPS. Uh, there was a tiny bit of stutter as it was getting its shader cache going, but right now, ah! <laughs> it's, uh, you know, as we go around the track, it's playing just fine. So you can play this. It looks really good. Uh, it, yeah, it's hard to play and talk at the same time, but yeah, Mario Kart is a, a go on this. Let's try uh, something else. These i9s are more powerful than expected when it comes to playing brand new console. Well, not brand new, but it comes to playing current gen consoles, at least for now. Now right, we're gonna try Tears of the Kingdom. I do not expect this to run, but you know, who knows? Well, we're getting about 22 FPS here in uh, Zelda. If we let the shaders build for just a little bit because it's constantly building the shader cache, maybe that'll improve, but um, it doesn't feel and it feels rough, but you know what? Let's try this at lower resolution because we can do that. Uh, you know what? It actually looks kind of cool when it's set to nearest neighbor like this. It's like <laughs> we are playing the pixel art version. This is really cool. It 
it's running at 30, 35, it, it goes up and down, but yeah, you can feel too much stutter, it slows down. Maybe in future updates this will work, maybe, if, if we change a few more of the settings. Okay, I actually I like the way this looks. Running it in half resolution is interesting. I didn't think I was going to like it, but nearest neighbor gives you those hard edges. <laughs> so I might actually try to play this a little bit. It kind of reminds me of an old DOS RPG, but with way, or way more going on. Let's see how Divinity Original Sin 2 runs. I like playing games that are from like a generation ago or two generations ago, just to see how they run. I could, You could play it on the medium setting if you wanted to, because it's turn-based and you're wandering around. It is going a little under 30 FPS here and there, so let's crank it down just a little bit. I mean, 720p will probably work just fine, but yeah, it's playable. Oh, this was a hard area. I forgot all my, all my hotkeys are not <laughs> set up on this machine. So yeah, I would recommend playing it on low if you're gonna do 1080 or medium on 720. Now we got Black Mesa going here. It's a little dark right now. We're on a rail, of course. And uh, this is running 1080p on high. So yeah, you can play games like Black Mesa just fine on this. Forgot where I'm going here. It's been a long time. Yeah, this feels great. So play this game on a medium. You could probably crank it up to high if you're okay with a little bit of slowdown. But I like my games to run just a tiny bit faster. So crank it up to medium and, and have fun. It's running really well. So Source Engine games... You can catch up on all the ones you missed if you like. This is the darkest level. I don't know why I picked something so dark. This little system will also be nice for playing tons and tons and tons of indie games so you can catch up on your entire back catalog of indie games that you've been ignoring and should have been playing because these games, to me, are a lot more interesting than what some of the AAA stuff has been doing lately. Uh, this is Anno Mutationum. And it's tons of fun. So if you've not played this, well... <laughs> Don't jump off the ledge like that. It's kind of like a mixture of a click adventure and a side-scrolling uh, shooter. So tons of fun, and it works just fine. Oh, look out. You can play a lot of your back catalog on this if you like. So this is a gaming PC in that it can play games, but it's not a gaming PC in that it can play super high-fidelity, brand-new AAA games that have all the graphical effects. Playing games like Divinity Original Sin 2 do work if you put them on like the low setting. So even games from a couple generations ago, if they've got all kinds of effects and 3D stuff and fog and just whatever was cool at the time, and still pretty cool now, I guess, if they have all that stuff turned up to max, uh, then you're going to need to crank it down a little bit, but it can play them. Then you have lots and lots of indie games that you can jump in and play on this. So that's really what I would use this for, emulators, indie games, uh, and some newer games that don't need crazy graphics cards because that's not what this is. Now, when it comes to Source Engine games, you've got a huge catalog of those. 1080p medium is like the sweet spot on this, in my opinion, so I would be playing those just like that. Also, a lot of like the MOBAs and stuff, like Dota, I don't play those, but those will play just fine on this. So if you wanna play Dota, um, if you wanna play, I don't know, GTA 5, not 6, because it's not out yet, but you can play GTA 5 on this. It will run. Those games don't require a ridiculous uh, graphics card. League of Legends, just fine on this again i don't play those so yeah uh, counter strike is a source engine game that'll work so you do have a lot of different games you can play in a lot of the mainstream and a lot of the big like competitive online games will work just fine on this so you could try those out now, overall if you want a lot of cores and some good frequency and some great productivity then this is a good way to go if you want the overall best gaming i don't think that this fully competes with the similarly priced small Ryzen computers. Ryzen GPUs, the integrated graphics cards, are just slightly better than these Intel, even though these are very good. Um, if you're really, really interested in gaming, I would go more in that direction. They also have offerings like that, so you can check out the other products that Ace Magic has. But for me, this is like a really good price for like an all-around system that has a lot of cool features. And I do really like that turbo knob on the front. And before we go, let me just tell you about what's going on over here at Epic Pants. We've got some new shirts in, got some stuff on clearance. Be sure to, we've got a few of these left, a few of the Viking Moons. I only have, well, two of these left. They're probably going to be gone by the time this is out, but we've got a small and an XL left, and I've got them on sale. There you go, small, 4XL, 5XL. When you put them in your cart, you can see Add to Cart, View Cart, and you will see that price is 45% off. So once you get into your cart, you'll notice the discount there. Otherwise, these are half price right now. So $19.99 for our mother membrane keyboard. 
you're not going to get a better keyboard for 20 bucks. I'm not going to sell it any harder than that. That's it. It doesn't need water resistant as well. All right, so head over to epicpants.com, grab that. Let me know what you think of this Ace Magic Mini PC with all of its fancy lights and s speed options. And I'll see you in the comments. Let me know what you think of this Ace Magic PC with its cool little knob on the front and all the stuff it does. Yeah, anyway, see you in the comments.